All right, so in this lesson, we're going to start talking about now and demonstrating this idea of gesture, action, movement, and kinetic energy with the figure and the figure model. Now, there, there are several different types of, of gesture drawing, and some are, are more contemporary or postmoderns, others are what we're going to be focusing on today, which will be much more traditional and more Renaissance and generally set up for drawing the figure in a Renaissance or more traditional or, or slightly more academic approach. However, there are other variations to that. But I just want you to know to, for today's lesson and for this figure series, this will be the primary vehicle now for gesture and movement. And what's really interesting I think about gestures, I talk a little bit here, is that this whole idea of gesture, right, you'll hear me say that, you'll hear me say action uh, quite a bit, and all this is kinetic or moving, right, energy and rhythm, okay, or flow, you'll hear that quite a bit too. So all these words, these catchphrases are really particularly important, obviously, uh, but they're going to be more so um, as we begin to talk about the movement of, of the figure. And we really, when analyzing that, we really have a, really a couple of movements, this whole flow of these curves inward and outward. So kind of a C shape or maybe even an S shape. To the movement. So you can start to get a feel for the figure by feeling this kind of chain reaction of opposites, one to the other, one side to the other, one side to the other. And you want to keep a fairly loose approach to uh, the drawing. So I'm going to change uh, paper here. And <clears throat> We're looking for this first introduction into the, the pose of the figure. What is the spirit of the pose? What is the actual um, figure doing? Rather than a detail, rather than a finish, it is the basic armature that we are after. So I'll put this here, basic armature. But not in a stiff way, but in a loose, very kind of flowy sort of positioning. So if I did a little gesture here, right, and started to throw out some armature here, and all of a sudden we've got maybe what looks like the movement of a figure. If I put a little bit of an oval symbol for a head, maybe a shoulder moving in this direction, right, maybe a little bit of a rib cage, a line of being, and all of a sudden we've got some flow to this and some movement to this. And so we can figure out what maybe the arms are going to do here, and maybe this arm is going to overlap, maybe sitting on some kind of chair. Okay? So all of this starts to become a series of movements that are rhythmic, that have a flow, right? and that have also, and we'll get into this later, scale and proportion, I'll just put S and P for now, scale and proportion embedded within the, the movement or the gesture of the pose. And everything that we'll do from now on, we'll start with the gesture. As a matter of fact, gesture is the, the most important of the figurative techniques, ironically, and more difficult, it's also the hardest to do, Surprisingly, right? Because it seems so simple. And we're also talking about 20 to 15 to 30 second gestures here. You know, you can do sustained gestures um, like Jacques Amedi if you want or other artists. But for us, we're using the 15, 20, 30 minute armature design line type of pose, right? And so everything that we'll do will be added onto later on scale, proportion, the volumetric figure detail, all of the properties of life, anatomy, but it all starts with 
a wonderful sense of this flow. So, so take some time in your own study and practice just doing this, getting loosened up by this chain flow of one side movement to the other movement, to one side to the other, one side, all over your paper in the future. Now, my student's doing a sketchbook. You'll just do this a little bit, but you'll get the feeling of the idea. What we're really saying is, we're saying a couple things. It's the spirit of the pose. It's also, later on, the direction or flow of body forms in space. So we have a feeling of where forms will go in our composition. Now, gesture can work for the figure. It can work for anything you draw, uh, as a matter of fact. Trees, animals, uh, dogs, chickens, rabbits, dinosaurs, anything that you want to conceive of in draw in the representational world will have gesture as a, as a backing uh, to it. Okay, so I think that's particularly important to note too as well. So, I think uh, what we'll do is now we'll get started and do some poses for practice so that we can begin to see these attributes of, of the, the model come forward. And I'll start to talk further about it. So I'll pop the first image up, image of uh, Michael uh, Angelo images from the Sistine Chapel. And so you notice how I'm holding my pencil, right? So I've got it in the palm method. I can hold it lower or I can hold it higher depending on what I want to do. But I can also compose. Now gesture and composition work really hand in hand as well. So the first thing generally when you want to start out is kind of find that oval of the head of this, of this figure. It's kind of a triangle in this pose and I'll talk about heads in a moment, right? So we see to locate that head, okay, very lightly. And then we'll start to move down the neck, down to the back, and we're filling out, we're feeling this gesture, this drama, right into here as we get to the butt. Now, notice we're not drawing the outside. We're not drawing an outline. We're not copying the model. We're analyzing the spirit of the pose. So we're drawing also, in a sense, inside, okay, inside to outside as well. This is particularly important in your understanding and knowledge. We're not drawing an outline, but we're drawing the movement inside the flow down to the buttock. Feel the buttock a little bit. The flow of the armature to the leg, to the knee. I'll mark the knee. Then we're going to come back in. Look how the leg comes back all the way through. Okay, And then the energy of the foot outward and over. Pretty simple, right? And then we'll feel a little bit of the shoulder line design coming across through here. We'll mark that shoulder, come down the elbow, mark the elbow a little bit to the arm, right in through there, just a little symbol for the arm. Then, of course, the other leg is off the pose a little bit. And then we could have this structure that Michelangelo's figure is sitting on down in through, obviously, down in through here. And that's it. So that's what we're looking for in that 20, 30 second feeling of a gesture. Okay, let's go on now to uh, another pose. So we'll take a similar figure and we'll start out again. Now sometimes you don't even need the head. So I'll lose the head this time and just put like a, uh, a line or a stick for the figure, the head and we'll start to work this way down. We're working from inside out, rhythm of the back coming down, flow through, marking where the buttocks will sit, roughly in through here, drawing very lightly, getting the, the rhythm of the outside leg that we see here, to the knee, okay, flow through, coming back, coming back through and over, to the ankle, to the foot, just marking that foot down very lightly, other leg outward, okay, a little bit higher, almost straight, and then downward in through and over into where the foot ends off the image. Now the arm, we can kind of mark that shoulder, okay, in through here, and over to the elbow, we'll mark that elbow, then downward in through to the arm, to the hand roughly right in through there, and then the other arm is going to be pretty much off, off the page.
page. Okay. Now I can add the head if I want to. I actually didn't like to add the head, for, the, the head first, but I wanted to show you the difference a little bit too as well. So we have that head there, mostly kind of a blocky oval oh, right in through there. Notice also the composition. Important. Notice how I filled up the space of the composition fully and completely uh, with the spirit of uh, the pose. Now, we'll have lots of opportunity to add material on top of this gesture later on. So, the idea, now if we go back a little bit, let's talk a little bit more abstractly. Let's do some flowy lines here in this direction, right? Here in this direction, okay? Here in this direction. This is all gesture. This is what we're looking at. Movement, rhythm, and also direction. So we get the spirit of the pose. We combine gesture with scale and proportion. We combine it with composition, but it also tells us about direction. So if I want to figure moving this way, my gesture moves this way. So later on, I can come back and I can add what could be a leg. In this case, it'll be a cylinder. So maybe we're coming back this way, and that tells me the gesture of what could be a torso, or we'll just put down, in this case, a nice box, right? Or we'll do the same thing here. Maybe this way is coming over and through and down, and then we'll arch over, and it might be a very curved kind of box for that particular pose. So, what gesture tells us then, it tells us where things are going to and also uh, where they're coming from, both uh, within the, the spirit of the pose. I think that's particularly important to understand uh, with gesture. <clears throat> so let's do another pose. Okay, we'll do another Michelangelo here. And I'm using art historical reference. So we'll start out. So the spirit of this pose, remember working inside out, it's a living armature. Moves in this direction, doesn't it? So a lot of times when I'm before I'm even drawing gesture, I'm just drawing or moving my arm, my hand through to here, to feeling where that composition is going to be, that flow. The knees will probably be here, then outward and over. So if you're a sculptor and you're wanting to get better at drawing, um, the gesture approach is like that first attempt at an armature, right? So the first thing I'll do now is I'll begin to put the head on. Which is a simple kind of human looking oval. You want to stay away from circles are not going to serve you really well. And also be careful not to make these too big or too small. And that's what scale and proportion. There's a video on that too as well. So the head I generally slow down a bit on. So we have the head there. Then we have the shoulder line. Then we get into this long design line. What I call the design line. The longest line through here. Over all the way to the knee. Way out here. Okay, I kind of mark the knee. And don't you worry about messing up. Gesture is meant to be malleable. It's meant to be changeable. So that it, when you get more... Uh, accurate with the pose that you're working on, you can alter and change as you need, right? So I'm marking the knee here, some foreshortening here, leg coming down, notice that it's higher than the other where the foot is, right in through there. So there's that armature spirit, over, right, and through, okay, over and through, and armature into here. Now I'll add a little bit of the line of being just for the sake of it, the rib cage area, in through here. Notice how the line of the model, the torso here, through the sternum, all the way to the uh, pubic region, really curves over. So we can put a little bit of that through there. And that's what you need, really, for your gesture to start to come alive, to build on to. Now, it doesn't look very sophisticated, but it's highly highly important to begin to utilize the simple inside-out approach to your gestures. Also, you want to start drawing lightly. Keep a real light touch to your gesture problem-solving as well. Let's go on to 
another uh, Michelangelo sculpture. I'll change color a little bit. All of the pencils I'm using are Carbothello, more chalky pencils on newsprint. My students, you'll use white paper and you'll use uh, color pencil, you'll use Progresso, but in YouTube land, you can use anything you want. So let's do another one here. And let's start, we'll start with the head. Okay, and it's about time I start talking about uh, head and gesture a little bit. Notice it's not quite an oval, it's a little bit more of a kind of a cup triangle that you can choose. A little bit of a neck coming in through here. You can see that coming down with just a little bit of a, a shoulder line in through here. Then we're going to find that beautiful torso center and start to see it move here and over. Take a look at that, how it moves over. It starts to move. We have a diagonal here of the hips. We have some foreshortening to tackle later on. Okay. This leg and knee comes down and through. Look how far the ankle moves all the way over to the other side of the model's face. So we have that, then we have the foot. We can mark that with just a little bit of an oval through here. Other leg coming down. Notice the height, the change diagonally. Okay, right in through there. Then we can come down with our gesture, and the foot's going to be here. <clears throat> then we can start to get a feel for the armature of this arm here and over, and it's hugged, foreshortened and over to the arm, to the hand here, and the other arm coming down off that shoulder. Right in through here, elbow, back, and then the hand will be through there. And you're pretty much there for gesture, okay? 20, 30 seconds, a little bit of maybe a torso in through here, and we've got it, okay? Now, I'm going to go on to another uh, piece of paper. Let's talk a little bit about uh, heads and head changes, okay? So, with heads, okay, in gesture, heads, and now we're talking about symbols, right? So, we're talking about gesture and head symbols. So, the most clearest communication, the one we use most often, right, is the simple oval, okay? So we have that. And you can even throw down Michelangelo's T there from the brow to the nose line, but that's the simple oval, okay? That's what you'll use probably most of the time, for sure, okay? I like using that too as well, okay? There's another one to use. It's kind of a rectangular block. But it's a little bit cylindrical, and it's a little wider at the top since our head is wider at the top. Okay, gesture the neck, gesture the neck there. So this is more of a block, a blockier sort of symbol right in through there. Okay, you can use that one. I think is a is a nice one <clears throat> to use as well. Um, and then one I like to use quite a bit in profile is the triangle. Let me show you that one. And so we have this triangle here with the neck this way, coming out this way. And the reason why is, for profile, it's a little bit more triangular, because later on we can put, I'm just going to put tri for this one, is that it starts to, see how we can build a skull off that? Watch this. Here's the oval, the jawline about center, here to here, right and down and over. And we have an eye, nose line through there, and we get a nice little gesture. Neck can come down off that triangle. So everything is based off in profile. I like to use a triangle. Okay, so try triangle and then uh, profile. P R O for profile. Also, I think which is important. Lastly, you know when you have head tilt as well, you can use that. Um, you can use kind of a simple oval, right, for a head tilt. But if you get a side of the head. You can start to make it a little bit more volumetric, right, right through there, right. And so here's the here's the eye line, here's the nose line. You start to see a head, maybe it's really tilted over like that. So you can use a little bit of 3D, but don't go quite crazy. And then lastly is what I call just a stem. Here's the shoulder line, right? Here's the C7 vertebrae, and here's just a stem. Sometimes you don't even need a head if you don't want to. So I'll just put a stem on there. As well, so I'll use all all of these in our demonstrations now coming up. So those are the head symbols that I would recommend using: the oval, the block, uh, the triangle for profile, 
a, a slight three-dimensional uh, head in through here, and then just a stem. If you were, this is the neck, the head would be like this. We're looking at the back of the head, just a stem and no head at all as well. So I think that will help quite a bit in your gestures too. So probably the hardest time you're going to have is to start to really loosen up and play this game of flow and energy and letting things go a little bit and letting them be more dramatic. So we'll have another Michelangelo pose here. So we'll start to do two or three now per page and we'll start to do some uh, some poses here. We'll do about 20-30 minutes of, of uh, poses so you can get a good feel for this as we exit off this video. So first thing I'll analyze here, we'll analyze that head, kind of an oval here. And sometimes I'll throw an eye line just like that. And the first thing we see is really tucked this way. Right? So coming this way over and through, okay, to the leg, to the outer leg, and over to the foot, okay. And coming up over the other leg to the foot, that's going to cup on over, right in through there, okay? Shoulder coming through and on, and that's all you need. You can put a little bit of, of rib cage, we call the lima bean, I'll get into that later, a little bit of the buttocks, and that's all you need for 15, 20, 30 second pose. Let's go on to another, okay? Looks like a, a titian. Pose here, so we'll do that front figure, the martyr figure with the arrow there. He's got a little ouchy. So we'll do we'll do a head slightly tilted, okay, in through here. And then we'll come down. We'll feel that pose through and over. Never any straight lines. There's always going to be movement through that rib cage to the hip. We'll mark the hip in through there. You can have a little bit of an oval if you want to the leg. Beautiful armature. Armature, armature here to the leg, over and down to the foot. Notice this, this knee is a little higher. This armature, the leg coming over. Curve of that beautiful leg coming through foot here. Shoulder to shoulder, one's rise higher. Low is a little bit left, we don't see the other arm. And that's about all you need to get started with that pose, right in through, right in through there. Okay, let's talk a little bit something about that spine. The spine has four curves. Okay, so if we draw a little head, triangular head here, spine comes out. First curve we have is that neck curve. Okay, so we have this neck curve. Then we're going to have that thoracic curve. Okay, we're going to have this rib cage curve coming over. Then we're going to have the lumbar curve right in through here. And then lastly, we're going to have the, the sacral coccygeal curve right in through here. So we have one, okay, two, three, four curves, right? And this is where the, the pelvis would be. The sacrum, pelvis, right in through that area, right in through the head. So we have, right, one, two, three, and one, two, three, and four, right in through there. To help you out with that, to see that. So when you get a straight pose in a rib cage, you're probably going to be turning it a little bit. You never want to get into one stiff kind of right angled 90 degree line. You have to be really careful, I think, with that. Okay, let's go on to some more gesture uh, figures here, figure studies here. So we have another laying down, really beautiful pose here. So the first thing I might look at when I analyze this is, is we're coming up here. So the movement and flow is really from the top right down to the, to the left and slightly at a diagonal. It's not, it's not flat across. See how it's moving a little bit? So that first kind of directive arrow, right, is in this way. The whole body is moving in that way. With gesture, you don't want to take little parts in pieces. You want to take it all in at once. So the quickest line, the design line, is this way, isn't it? It's a flow out. So let's make sure that we understand design line. That's the longest line in the model. The flowiest, longest design line that helps us with that pose. Sometimes you don't have them, you're foreshortening, but this one does. It really moves nice and long this way. So let's analyze this pose. 
really pushing him over now with his chin there. Let's really get him over, eye line here. Let's really turn him over, coming through right to the, to the uh, hips, right in through here. So we can move his shoulders here to here, okay? Coming through, we're finding this leg now over. We'll mark the knee, and this leg disappears a little bit underneath with the foot about right here, okay? Then the next movement of the gesture is the long limb of this leg over and tucked up and through. There's the leg, so very flowy, rhythmic, in through there, and then we're gonna get an accordion kind of line of beam. We'll do a little bit of that rib cage here, and up and over, okay? we we'll get some contraction right in through there, and then we have the arm here resting on the elbow, and then flowing up and over where we get the hand, and then back over and up to the hand right in through there. So that long design line, right in through here, wasn't it? Right in through that area for the gesture. Okay. Let's go on to a few more here. So we have Rubens here. This is a good one for the triangle of the head. Let's see that. So the overall figure, the design line, is really kind of a cupped curve. It's kind of a U-shape. You see that gesture? Really U-shaping around knee to buttock, over to head, right? Up to arm is going to be down and through there. Now we can kind of feel that, get a feel for that composition. That's about as abstract as that gesture can get, right? Since we're keeping it very rhythmic. And that's what gesture is. It's also an abstraction, a beginning movement of the flow of the figure. So now we can take and find that triangle of the head. Take a look how tucked in it is. So here's the chin. Here's the top of the head. So we'll just find that triangle here. Keep it light. Keep our gesture light and loose. We can always change it, neck flow this way, which flows over to the arm, shoulder, elbow, downward out, through to the hand, falling over, okay? Then we have a line for the shoulder, right through here to the breast, okay? Then this is really important. This movement takes us all the way through, right, doesn't it? Downward, to finding where the buttock will be. Notice I didn't draw the outline, I'm drawing the inside. That's going to be your biggest challenge is to draw inside out. Most of you, many of you are going to want to draw heavy outlines. It's my job here in class to stop you and to make you see the inside flow of the armature rather than the outside. We'll get to the details later, right? We'll get there later on. So we see this flow here, okay? We have this coming. Then we see upward to the armature of the leg, okay, to the knee, which is lower than the head, we see that, and then outward, I'll let that crop out, and we have that gesture through there, then we have the other leg flowing this way, to the knee about right there, then coming back over and through, hitting that ankle, now, to the foot, and then we can build our entire figure off that, and of course we have the other arm and hand through there to the hand, right in there. Okay, there's our gesture. Let's go on, let's do two more. Let's do two more studies here. All right, so we have a multiple figure of the Pieta, Michelangelo's Pieta, so we can compose. This would be a good one for composing and gestures. So the first thing we might look at is we notice that the entire composition is really kind of a large triangle, isn't it? So from the top of Mary's head, downward through Jesus' knee here to the feet, right, and over down a little bit further where that flow is, and then back over, back from her head to his head roughly, right in through here, over and down. Notice how that's a large, see how that's a large triangle, okay? Notice how I also use the entire space of the picture plane. That's for gesture, okay? I'll put G-E-S-T, gesture and composition go together. That's going to be another difficult part as you're learning how to control gesture. Keep it flowy. Keep it armature line and, and, and push the drama. But you also use it as a compositional device. That's why gesture is numero uno. Okay? It's the ganador. It's the winner. It is the winner. 
and it is the most important, I think, beginning technique in figure drawing, and it would and it gives you that rhythm that you want to continue on with for the rest of a drawing. So let's start now. We know where we want our head of Mary right in through here. So there's that oval for her slightly tilted. So I'll give a little axis line right in through here. Okay. Maybe a little eye line. Don't want to get into too much detail. Nose through there, right? So we have that shoulder across, shoulder to shoulder. We see that flowing this way. Flowing down where she's got clothes on, the breasts will be slightly tilted through there. Most of the action comes with the Jesus figure. Okay, so now let's add his head. Okay, right in through here. Okay, tilted back and over. Let's get that oval here. Chin right in through, jawbone and over. There we go. There's his head emerging and through with the neck covered up a little bit. Eye line curving over. Nose right in through there. Okay, we have that leaning over. He's really, it's really feel that limpness, the life that's come out of his body and left him. So we have the gesture here of the ribs, the inner part. I'm looking at the inside of the of the figure, not the outside, but the inside armature up and over to the slight pelvis right in through here. Legs, let's see that curve. Curve building through and over to the leg and outward, okay, to the inner leg here, downward, long, in through here to the ankle, to the foot, and out that way, okay. So we can build him through here. We'll put a little bit of the oval for the pelvis. Then that, that elbow coming up, covering up half the head, we'll mark it right in through here, limp, and she's raising him up through the elbow, or excuse me, through the shoulder to the elbow, then limply over, okay, to the arm, which will be dangling, dangling off that way. Then we can begin to complete her arm will be here, underneath the flow of her, her robe, which is a gesture, and through, right, this way and over, and we catch the entire movement of all this gesture right in through there and compose there. Two figures in one. Very quick, very initial uh, gestural lay-in and composition. All right, let's do, let's go on to do one more. All right, so with this last one, <clears throat> we've got a nice pose. So sometimes you'll get a figure, and you'll see this quite a bit in class, and I'll, and I'll, I'll make issue of this in my class, but you can, in YouTube land, we'll see this too as well. When you have a pose like this one, and you see that the head is not the highest point in the composition, you want to bring, obviously you want to bring that head down, or you're going to crop everything out up top. So if you don't, put the head up pretty high uh, in the piece of paper, on the composition, in the picture plane, if the head is at the highest point of the drawing. So let's do that. Now see, so sometimes we'll see, we'll find that design line here. Here's the flow of the model, right? Even from the arm, through, cupped and over, downward, long design line, belly kind of right in through here, design through here, leg, look how long it is, leg, knee to the other, to the lower leg coming down, and then of course the foot down and through here. So that's a long design line because that's what we were, we're wanting to look at. Then we'll come through to the other leg. We'll feel that over. Notice knee to knee is on a diagonal. We'll mark that knee. We'll bring that armature, that leg, over. And then we'll feel that foot in through here. Gesture and armature. All right, so now we'll kind of begin to find where we want to put that head. We'll put that head right roughly right in through here, and I'll use kind of a blocky sort of oval right in through here a little bit. Yeah, it feels like it's about right in through here. That feels good. Right in through there, eye line in through, slightly bottom of the nose, okay? We'll keep a line to be able to draw over that. Hand in through here, and I'm gonna, looks like, crop off a little bit, which is fine. Then I'll come back down, <clears throat> bring this shoulder, 
and then we can start to bring all this into a little bit more of a feeling of solidity as we see the shoulder now through curving back over look at that curve coming through and over and then back off and downward where the hand would be it kind of comes off and out just a nice little animation kind of oval in through there and it will give a little solidity to the torso and the rib cage right in through here nothing's nothing too concrete yet nothing too volumetric yet just to see that flow kind of in through here the back side of the buttock right in through there and we're kind of on our way aren't we into a stronger gesture and that is gesture okay rhythm movement the initial reaction into the model with that armature that's all we're needing inside and out don't get bogged down with heavy outlines that's going to be the big big key to that okay all right so the next video i'll make on gesture will be uh, several demos looking at uh, speeding up this process a little bit so we can really practice it um, for your, uh, your knowledge and your craft. This, I can't overstate how important gesture is. It's the, the most difficult technique to learn. It's the most difficult technique to master. And it needs a lot of repetition. Every drawing that you're going to be doing or will do that's representational, that's fairly traditional, will we'll start with a gesture of some sort. And you'll carry that rhythm all the way through from its beginning until its end, even with quite a bit of detail attached to it. Okay? All right. Good luck with it. I'll see you next time. And look for the, uh, the gesture demo coming up. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.